Now look at you, there you are, you are back again. This is part three of the beginner tutorial for Cyberlink's PowerDirector video editing software. Other tutorials that will follow will delve more into playing with the other awesome tools and capabilities of this software program. If you haven't already, click on the link in the description below. I'll also provide a link pinned in the comments. Download and get your free copy of Cyberlink's PowerDirector 365. It is yours free for 30 days. Play with it all you want. Afterwards, if you decide you love it, you can subscribe and you will have access to unlimited number of features constantly being updated on Cyberlink's website. There you will find lots of theme packs and special effects and transitions that are constantly added and updated on a regular basis. Well, today we have a lot to cover. We're going to talk about file structure and how to set up your files and folders so that you can quickly and easily find all of those video clips and photos that you're looking for to bring into this program, a DVD or a video that you can share. And I'll be covering an introduction to the tools. Once you bring these videos and photos onto your timeline, it will open up access and give you plenty of options there to the tools that are available to you in PowerDirector 365. And we will be adding audio to the soundtracks. We're going to putting some music, these videos that you're making or the slideshow that we'll be making and really give your videos that special personal touch. All right, so let's jump right back into it. Put your thinking cap on, get some coffee, get pen and paper to take notes if you would like, get PowerDirector downloaded if you don't already have it, or continue to watch the videos and you can decide for yourself if it is easy enough for you. So stay tuned on how you can fire up PowerDirector and within minutes drag and drop photos and video clips in there and produce a movie within minutes without doing anything else. It all does it for you. Okay, before we open PowerDirector, if you even have PowerDirector already installed on your computer, uh, if you don't, just follow along here. We're going to start right here on our desktop from square one. You take the memory card out of your camera. Your memory card might be a micro SD card, which is this tiny thumbnail sized memory card, and you'll probably have to slide that into an adapter that looks like that. That way the larger SD card adapter can fit into the slot on the side of your computer. Pop that in there, and after you do that, your computer should automatically open up a window showing you what is on that memory card. And in the DCIM, folder you open that up and then you'll see another folder in there where it is numbered and that is where there will be your video clips from whatever you recorded out there in your day so now what we're going to do is we're going to create a new folder for you to keep all of your photos and videos and move them to from your camera so that you can find them when you go into the cyberlink power director and import them into the power director software so what I do here is you can see I have a genes therapy folder on my desktop here and if you want to go ahead and make a folder if you don't know how to do that right click on your desktop hit new slide over new to folder and click that and you'll see right here on the desktop you'll have a new folder waiting for a name on your keyboard go ahead and type in whatever you want to my videos photos hit enter now you have a folder right there. Now you open up that folder and put it next to the window that opened up when you put your SD card into the computer and then drag and drop your videos from your SD card. They will stay on your SD card now so you'll always have them backed up there. Drag and drop it into your new folder called My Videos. Now after a while you're going to get a lot of videos on here and they're going to be Thanksgiving or Christmas or somebody's birthday or a wedding or a graduation. So you're going to want to categorize your video. So inside my vi my photos, my videos and photos, which I misspelled, you can create another folder to keep those categorized. So let's say this video that I just drug into there is a graduation ceremony. I can create another folder inside here and say Joe's graduation. Hit enter. And now you take this video file that you drug into there, hold it over the folder, and it says right there move to Joe's grad and we're going to drop it in there so now if you double click that folder that folder is in there and here's the path right here it's on your desktop my video photos Joe's graduation and the, the videos are right in there so now if you click this arrow you will go up one step or back out one step I should say and if you click it again you go to the desktop so 
we're going to close that out and you can see right here it's right here anytime you want to look in there or add more video you just go in here and let's say oh there's a wedding we could need a new folder Mary's wedding Mary got married okay and you could now take those videos from your memory card of her wedding drag and drop them into this folder right here and they will be there forever and ever and then once you compile the movie once you make the movie in power director you can then drag and drop that into the appropriate folder and they will always be there so I'm going to delete that folder system because I don't need it and I'm going to open Gene's therapy folder and you can see what videos I have already here most of my stuff after I start to get a lot of these videos in here I will select them all and back them up to a separate hard drive that way I keep my working area here as decluttered and cleaned up as possible. I'm going to show you a basic uh, folder structure inside of Gene's Therapy folder. For example, if I go up here to where, I don't know if you saw the video, don't waste your money and time waxing, you should be doing this instead. Well this video here, or this folder here is that video and everything that makes up that video. So if I open that, you will see in here I have other subfiles. Assets, audio, drone footage, rendered. This is when the video is finished and, and I export it as a video. And uh, this is just the video clips from the camera. So in audio, obviously, I would put all my uh, audio files in there, whether it's music or sound effects. And assets, this is everything with pictures and special effects and B-roll. If I want to put illustrations in my video to show something, then that will also be in there. Drone shots, if I have any drone shots, I'll put those in there if I want to add those to my video. Render, it will again, of course, have the video with different stages of rendering. And this is the final video here. And uh, video, again, is just all the video clips from my camera that I took to make that video. And that's where I imported them into the software from. Okay, we're going to go in, we're going to close all this out. After you put all your uh, video clips into the folders, you can just remove your memory card out of the computer and put it back in your camera. Now, let's go ahead and open up PowerDirector. Okay, once you have PowerDirector open, it should look like it did the first time you ever opened it. Uh, we have not created a new project yet, so this is the default photos and videos that you see here that are in the uh, media room, if you will. Now, before I go for any further, I'd like to introduce a little helper of mine that I've installed, an application here that takes my mouse and it kind of animates it, uh, gives it some automation here uh, so that I can be hands-free. You know, I like to talk with my hands, so I can just focus on the tutorial, and the mouse can do all the work based on my voice commands. So I'll introduce you. I've named him Blue. Blue, where are you? Blue? Blue? Come on over here, man, front and center. How you doing? Doing okay? You ready to do this? Remember what we talked about, right? You're not going to be straying off or anything. You're going to pay attention? All right, well, let's get going. So, let's move right along. Okay, time to bring some video clips into the editor. And I'm sure you can remember that uh, we just need to click on this import media button right here and that will present us with the import media files option there we can click that and that will open up a dialog box of some videos now there's another way if your power director program is not on full screen if you just bring it down to you can just grab it and pull it down away so you can see your desktop um, if you see that folder that you created my videos folder that we created on the desktop you can hit from here open that up and uh, for example if this were it and I could just browse to where my videos are in this folder and I can grab them and drag and drop them right into my media library in the program and grab that one and grab this one grab it in there grab that one and just drop them in there and close that out and now I can return the program back to its full screen size. Okay, now we have the program returned to full screen and this part is not alien to you. You've been here before. This is the media room and uh, there's something I want to point out here is at the top here I showed you uh, this where you can display what's in this window here by selecting one of these options here. Right now it's on media content that includes our film 
photos and audio files. You can use this button here to adjust the size of these icons. If your vision is not that great on a computer, you can reduce the size of them or make them larger right there. Um, also, if you want to browse other features that you can bring up in this window instead of having a bunch of windows open, you can go click there. And th These are color boards if you want to use these for backgrounds. We'll go over that at some other in some other video. Uh, background images, you can bring these in. You can use these as a background for an intro video, for example, and you could put text across it and set up a title for what the uh, video they're about to watch has to do with. All right, background images, background music. They have a, a library already built in with various types of music uh, from orchestral to piano, world pop, rock, and you just go through these if you click on one. So you can, you can see first day of spring, it's an orchestral piece here that's two minutes and three seconds long. It just tells you how big it is. And we're going to go click here and look at a sample of this. <laughs> Okay, what you're determining there is this the type of music I want to use with a certain video. If it is, you click the download button and it will download that from Cyberlink. And after it's downloaded, you can just grab and drop it right there on the sound or audio track of your timeline. And now it will be on your timeline. And now you can put whatever photos or video you want above it. I usually put the photo and videos on the timeline first and then select my music based on the mood that I want to convey. So that's the background music. Um, we have sound clips. If you um, need some background sound effects like an airplane sound. That's your airplane sound. And you have other options here to choose from as well if you need to incorporate those into your movie. If you click on my projects here, this brings up any project that you have created. So when you come into Power Director, you can create a new project. You can click File, New Project, and it will take away everything that is here from a previous project, ask you if you want to save it. You have that option to save it, and after you save it, you can say yes. And then you bring in a new project, everything will be blank and then you'll bring in new media. As you collect projects, you have different projects, you'll have those listed here under my projects and you can go back to them quickly. Express projects, that's another uh, wonderful thing. It's, it's uh, pre-done templates that are you can drop onto your timeline and they do a lot of work for you, but we're not gonna cover that in this lesson. So we're gonna go back to media content that we have right now. So I've got uh, the, the regular pictures that come with the power director, which we can remove if we want. And I have those videos that I added, the jet ski videos here. Now just to reduce the clutter, I'm gonna remove the image files that are in here. I don't have any audio files in here yet. So these are only video files that we're looking at right now. So what we're gonna do now is we are going to insert video clips onto the timeline, which you already know how to do, boom, there it is, there's a video clip on the timeline. Okay, but this is the full video clip, you know? So what you could do is you could scrub through here like I showed you, and you can trim the video clip down if you don't want that excess on there. You can also come into a place and say, uh, I only want this portion here of the video clip, right here. So I don't want all of this up here. Well, you don't have to run over here and trim that video clip down all the way here. You can simply click this button here and depending on where your playhead is, if you click that button, it will split the clip there. You can highlight that clip and you can hit delete. And it will ask you, do you want to remove this clip and leave a gap? Do you want to remove it and fill the gap? Or do you want to fill the gap and move the clips over? Well, let's say I'm going to just uh, remove and fill, move the clips over. So now at the beginning of the movie or the beginning of the video is the one clip that I trimmed up to be just the part that I want to use here because it's a really long clip. So we have that clip there. Another way you can do this without having to do all this down here on your timeline is you can edit a clip while it is still right here in the media room. So I'm going to right click on this clip and now I have some options. We're just going to go right on down 
and select show in library preview window. So the library here has a pre -win preview window that comes up and we're going to resize it so it's nice and big. So we have our regular preview window for what is on the timeline and now we have a preview window what is here. So we keep what's on the timeline over there and what we have over here is a preview window of this file of this video clip. So now what I can do is I can scroll through here and go okay I only want I, want, I just want the part right here of the jet ski taking off. So I'm going to put the playhead here. I'm going to grab this little yellow triangle here, move it right to where that jet ski's taking off, and then I'm going to hit mark in. I'm telling the program that this is the end point of this clip that I want. And then I'm going to come down here and grab the other, and I'm going to bring it down to where I want the video clip to end and I'm gonna click mark out. Now, instead of, so therefore, instead of doing all this trimming down on the timeline, I've just got this part selected. I click on that, I drag it down to the timeline, and boom. So there it is, it's on the timeline, work is already done right up here. Now you can do that with any other clip that you click on and it will now appear in this window so you can do a little operation on it. Now, if you wanted to, instead of grabbing it and dragging it, clicking, dragging it down, to the timeline, you can just click on one of these buttons that says insert on the selected track right there where the playhead is, or you can overwrite if the playhead is sitting, say, in the middle of this clip, you can say overwrite right there and it will send it into the middle of that clip, overwriting a part of that clip that's already on there. If we play it back a little bit, here's the raw footage. And it switches to that clip, jet ski taking off. And then it switches back to the other clip. You've got these three little clips down here, edited and ready to go. We're going to add some sound. Now if you want to, you don't want this window here and you'd rather do all your trimming down here on the timeline, you can close out this window by clicking this X. Click that and it will remove it and then you can resize the window. Now we've got these clips on the timeline like we've already talked about. Now we're going to put some music to it. There's a couple ways to do this. We can go right up here to the background music that we looked at and we can find some kind of music here that would go with jet skiing. So let's say uh, maybe some rock or something or something that's you know got got some uh, a beat, a good beat action kind of beat. Okay so we're going to do this uh, Sounds like Southern Rock there. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and download that. And once it's downloaded, we're gonna grab it and bring it on down. And let's drop it down here where it says, this is a music track down here. All right, we can see the music is longer than the video. So all we need to do here is we can click this music track and we can drag it all the way down. Okay, so now we have music on the timeline to go with our video. Okay, now the problem here is you have a lot of jet ski noise in the background, so you have a few options right here if you go look at your clips. So all we're going to do here is turn it down. You can go back to the clip, and you see a bar running across the waveform, the audio f track of that clip, and you can adjust the volume right there, and it tells you what the, how loud the volume is, plus or minus decibel. And now when you play the clip, let's bring it down some more. We just want it barely detectable back there. There we go. Okay, so that's better. So you can highlight the clip and you can adjust the volume right there on the clip itself. And if you need to open that up, remember all you gotta do is drag the timeline at the top and you can really see and have much more control over adjusting the volume of that clip right there. So not only can you adjust the volume here on the waveform by dragging this up and down and looking at the number value, you can also click on this mixer button here and you can adjust the volume from audio one right here on this mixer. So you put the playhead wherever you want to, highlight the clip and then adjust the volume. Now if you notice after you did that it added a keyframe. It says, okay, we're going to do what we call duck the volume. 
So we're gonna, the volume's starting here, and then when it gets down here, it's really going to be low, and then it's slowly going to come back up to where it originally was. Well, no, I want the whole video clip to be at that volume. So just come back up here to your mixer and click Normalize. It will make the, the volume on that clip consistent from beginning to end. That's one place where to get music. So I'm going to come down here, and I'm going to delete that music that we put on there and I'm going to find some more music. Now there's a couple ways you can do this. You can import media again, or you can show the desktop and drag and drop it into this media room. Click here, import media files, and now if I wanted to, I can go to the audio of this, and here's the music that I downloaded uh, from my sources, which is Epidemic Sound, which is why it has ES at the beginning. I pay a monthly subscription subscription to have access to this music, but you can get music for free, and I'll show you how. But if I wanted to, I can browse to music I already have on my desktop and pick music that I want to insert into this video from there. So let's say I go to audio here, and I go down to Jambo Reggae, and I click open, bring that in, and now here it is on in the media room. Now I'm just going to click it, drag it, and take it back down to the music track. And hold it to the left so I go all the way back to the beginning of the video of the movie. You can see down here on the music track that this is a very long song. So we're going to be trimming that off as well. So we're going to move the playhead to the end. And we're going to hit cut or split the clip. And now I can delete that excess off. And now we have some music on the timeline to go with our video. And again, if you don't want the noise there, you can reduce the volume or you can say mute this clip by right clicking on it and saying mute the clip. Now it won't play anything. Just the music. Okay, so I'm going to delete that music off of the timeline again and Another way to bring in music is from YouTube itself. If you go to this web address right here, you will find this library of music on YouTube. And there's several different ways to find music on YouTube. This is all free music. Uh, you can put in some filters here. You can enter the genre of the music that you're looking for. Say you're looking for jazz and blues and you're looking for a particular mood like calm and it will narrow down the music that is shown down here in the list. It will repopulate it with music that is jazz and blues based on your mood. You can also look for music that's a certain length or it has an attribution. Some of these have an attribution required and what that means is if you click on some of these titles it will open up and tell you if you could just grab that music and use it in your movie or your video as it is or do you have some sort of attribution that you need to add along with that music some of the titles will say down here you can use this music for free but you need to give me credit by putting my name in the description portion of your video so far none of these are saying that so once you find the music that you want, you can click this play right here and it will give you the music. And if you like that, then you can move right over here and click download and it will download that tune into your downloads folder. Now if you look on your desktop in your download folder, you open that up and there is the music that we downloaded. So you know it's there. So you can drag and drop this now into your project folder of my videos, or we can just import it from PowerDirector out of the downloads folder. Now from within PowerDirector, we can click on import media files and we can import it that way, or we can drag and drop it right into PowerDirector. So let's go to our downloads folder. There's the music, click on it, open, it brings it into our media room. Now I can take this song, or this title, and I can bring it down onto the timeline. I'll, I'm going to put it down here on this music track. And as you can see, once again, this is quite a long song, so we'll have to trim it. So I'm gonna bring my playhead 
to the end of the video and I'm going to click the split the clip button it's already highlighted hit delete and now it is trimmed to the length of the video there's our music <laughs> Not exactly the music appropriate for uh, this type of video clip, or this type of action video, but uh, there it is. And that's how you do that. Now at this point, if you're happy with what you've got, go right up here to produce, and you know where that takes us. That takes us right into the production window, where everything is already set up, ready to go, and all you need to do is point where you want this video to be saved to before you have them produce it. All right, we're not going to make, we're not going to produce this movie right now. We are going to go back up top here, go back to edit. The purpose of that part of the tutorial was to just to teach you how to put audio files on the timeline and where you can get them. Okay, now we're going to talk about tools. All along the side of this media room window is you have access to various tools that you can work on your video clips with. If you hold the mouse over these these tabs on the side of the media room, uh, it will explain to you, it will give you a title of what is in that tab, as I went over in part one of this tutorial. So I'm going to select this clip down here on the timeline, and I'm going to say I would like to add a effect to that clip, please. And so I'm going to click on effect right here and what this does this opens up the fun here right here you have access to all kinds of effects that you can add to that particular clip now if you select one of these clips it will bring over here in the preview window an example of what that clip does uh, abstractionism is this one you have uh, a backlight here on this one and it gives you it's got this pinwheel uh, flower here that's spinning around to kind of give you an idea of what that effect does now let's say I like this effect or I want to see what it looks like on this clip. So I'm going to click this backlight effect and I'm going to drag it and I'm going to bring it down to the clip and you'll see that it only wants to, it doesn't want to go onto the audio file, it says no, but if you hold it over the actual video clip, it says yes, I won't be able to work there. So you drop it in there. Now you can look back up at your preview window and you can see by scrubbing through up here what it has done to your clip. This shot here is just me over the shoulder and it added this backlight effect to that clip. Now if I want to see if that will look good also in the next clip I just click and drag it onto the next clip down below, let it go, and now that clip has that effect. And we can play that and see how it looks. <laughs> That's actually a really good clip for this type of video. I'm going to grab it and drop it onto this one. And there you go. Adds a sense of speed. It's a it's a pretty cool clip there. Or a pretty it's a pretty cool effect there. Now if you look back down here on the timeline, you can see that an eye has been added to each video clip that I put that clip on. If you mouse over that eye, that means information it will show you what has been added to that clip and it shows right there a backlight has been added a backlight effect now if you select that clip and come right up here to effects click that it will open up the effects that are currently on that clip if you don't want it on there you can uncheck it right there or you can just remove it altogether and now you can see the eye is no longer on this clip so it has no effect. It did remove the effect. Now if you don't want to remove it but you would like to tweak this clip or this effect, you can come right up here in the effects setting and you can adjust the effect to more of your liking. If you want it to be a much stronger effect, as I crank this slider up you can see in the preview window that really getting some intense rays of light coming shooting out at me. This is a really nice effect. Or we can drag the degree button and it will adjust the softness or hardness of that effect. Each effect works the same way. If you see one that you like and you put it on a video clip like that 
and it will apply the effect to that video clip and if you click on the effects button down here while that video clip is selected click on effects and it will open up or you can remove it hide it or you can add or take away from that effect you can say uh, I want more on this y-axis or the x-axis I want more scramble so if you see the preview window over there as I move this slider it really scrambles that mosaic up and then I want to apply a mix you can also keyframe this effect in other words you can have it only appear at a certain time during this clip and I will explain that in some other tutorial so have some fun get in there highlight a clip take a look at it think about what you what effect you think would look pretty cool with it come up here grab an effect drag it down there onto the video clip and then give it a play and see how it looks if you want to make some adjustments you simply click on the clip come back over here to effect and this will bring up your adjustment options for that effect so you have quite a list of effects here they are broken down into categories over here on the left side so I have it right now selected for all content if you want it broken down if you want to look for something more in particular like I want particle effects I want special style text masking these other things that you will become familiar with as you continue to play with these you can just narrow down the type of effect to, to be displayed over here some of them for example like dandelions if you grab this dandelion and I brought it back down here onto a, a clip and released it then it would actually add dandelions to that clip and once again you can highlight that clip click on effect and now you can add the 3d depth of the dandelions you can add the direction they're blowing you can change the density the number of them so if I increase this it adds more dandelions I can increase the size of them right here so now let's play that back it up a little bit the dandelions are blowing away all the way. obviously that effect doesn't apply to this type of video clip but I'm just trying to provide you an example of what that type of effect what these effects do a lot of fun these effects are just get in here and play with them um, there's different places and different types of videos that they will be useful for here's a waterfall effect that you can add to a clip right here click and drag it drop it on there and you have a waterfall effect that's pretty good waterfall coming off my face okay let's highlight that clip and click on effect and you can place that waterfall where you want it to be in the clip like that so you can just place it where you want it and then hit a space bar and if, if this was a video showing a uh, showing a mountain or something like that you could put that waterfall there in that video now if we want to get struck by lightning we can go up here and grab a lightning effect and drop it in on the clip and boom there it is if you play that you see okay there's some lightning but it's you know there's no clouds up there and I don't want it there so you what do you do highlight the clip click effect and go in here and give enter the parameters of what that lightning should be doing you're going to want to position it and in this one it gives you just a drag and drop capability to position the lightning like it's coming from off screen click OK and you can change the length of the lightning or the scale of it the branch decay you can see the branches coming in and going out the branch ratio the glow size you know if it's daytime could add a lot more glow to it direction range the core size of the brightest part you can increase that and make it really bright bolt of lightning or just more of static electricity looking again you can have that lightning show for only a moment if you want and the way you do that is you keyframe it so you click on keyframe and here are your keyframes you can keyframe everything about that lightning you can say when the course the core size changes size where in the video it does that so we can just say that we just want it to appear for a flash of a second so like I said before keyframing is a, another tutorial but trust in the world of video editing the effect the impact 
that the, your video will have has a lot to do with keyframe. All right, so you might want to take a break. <laughs> go get yourself some coffee or go eat lunch or something. And this is kind of a long video. I've still got some more material here I want to get to, so a lot of fun stuff that I want to get to. Actually, this video is turning out to be so long that I'm going to go ahead and cut it in half right here because I still have about another 30 minutes worth of material to cover. So this is a good time to make sure you have that bell icon clicked so you, you will know now that you have finished taking part three here of the tutorial. If your bell icon is clicked, you will be notified when I release part four, which is going to be right on the tail. If you're new here, be sure to join my club, subscribe. We're a great bunch of people here. We look out for each other. We have parties, get togethers, potluck. It's a lot of fun. You'll be glad you did. I'm Bobby Jean. Thanks for watching.